Hi, my name is Frank, and this is module number two of our customizing PG Star for your MESA models. What I'd like to do in this module is give some of the background in the astrophysics so that as we start putting up some of the plots and we start customizing uh, the plots that you have some idea of what it is we're plotting uh, and why we're customizing it in the particular way that we are. So, onward. Uh, so this is sort of a global viewpoint of uh, what is going on. Down here on uh, this axis is giving the initial solar mass anywhere from about 6 to about 10 or so. Uh, and all of these stars in this range are sometimes referred to as the super AGB stars. And they're sort of that boundary region between stars whose final fate is to give the most massive white dwarfs over here, and then stars that give the most numerous supernovae. So stars in these regions burn different types of fuel depending on their mass. Could be helium, carbon, carbon oxygen, silicon. Uh, and as a result, they have different fates from planetary nebula to electron capture supernovae to more traditional core collapse supernovae. And then as a result, they have um, different remnants. So whether it's a carbon oxygen white dwarf remnant, an oxygen neon magnesium white dwarf, uh, remnant, a neutron star, or a neutron star, and a black hole. For demarcation, uh, I mark here the Chandrasekhar mass of the mass of the carbon core of 1.38. The common piece of physics that happens between in this mass range, in the super AGB range, is that they all feature ignition uh, under degenerate conditions, electron degenerate conditions. So that's sort of the global viewpoint. Let's uh, bear in a little bit uh, on a um, generic example. So here on the right hand side we have our carbon oxygen core and then outside of that we have our helium burning shell. So of course the largest density is in the core uh, but because the thermal neutrino losses go at least as the density squared the neutrino losses cooling is larger in the center. And therefore, the hottest temperature is not at the center of the carbon-oxygen core, but it's off-center. You have a thermal inversion, a temperature inversion. And therefore, uh, if carbon ignites, it's going to ignite off-center. And that off-center ignition is then going to get convective behind uh, the burning point, and a flame is going to begin propagating toward the interior of the carbon oxygen core. This of course turns the carbon oxygen core into uh, an oxygen neon magnesium core. Okay, So uh, you're going to begin your burning out here. Over on the left upper part here is uh, what the flame looks like as it propagates in. On the y-axis is the log of the temperature. On the y-axis is uh, the radius. Uh, and so each of these yellow lines is a snapshot in time as this flame propagates. The green is given by uh, is the density, is the right-hand axis. And um, these are very subsonic, they're very slow flames, and so the pressure is basically isobaric across the flame front. And so as uh, heat, as energy leaks out uh, and it begins to heat material, the temperature rises as burning takes over. Uh, and as the temperature rises for a constant pressure, the density must drop behind the flame front. This particular uh, set of calculations is for a composition of uh, ox uh, carbon 12.3, oxygen 16.7. You can see that the flames are quite slow, right, on the order of a few hundredths of a centimeter per second. They're fairly flat, uh, uh, fairly wide, uh, 3.25 centimeters. And these flames operate in what's called balanced power, where the uh, energy deposited by nuclear reactions is balanced at the flame front uh, by the thermal neutrino losses. The lower left-hand plot is uh, from MESA. This is a Kippenhahn diagram with mass on the y-axis and time uh, on the x-axis. Excuse me, mass on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. The red here is the carbon burning, the peak carbon burning. Uh, and then behind the flame front is the blue convective region. So these things are referred to as convectively bounded carbon flames. And in this particular case, it takes about 17, 18,000 years for the flame to prop
propagate from its uh, an ignition point of around 0.5 solar masses all the way into the solar core. One of the key questions that is going to determine that fate of the super AGB star, whether it becomes a massive white dwarf or a massive star supernova, is does that convectively bounded flame reach the center? Uh, and there are three conditions that all have to be met if the flame is not going to die and make it all the way toward the center. One is you just got enough fuel to maintain the balanced power condition of uh, nuclear burning and balancing thermoneutrino losses. The second one is that the temperature is hot enough so that you can ignite carbon. If you can't ignite carbon, that'll certainly kill the flame. And the third one is, is that you've got to keep the temperature hot enough, long enough, uh, such that the flame does not die because of thermal neutrino losses. So got to have the fuel, got to have it hot, got to keep it hot enough, long enough. If any of those are violated, the flame will die uh, and it will not reach toward the center. So as we start putting together our PG star plots, uh, we're going to be um, putting together plots that will be able to address some of these questions uh, about inwardly propagating convectively bounded carbon burning flames. That's a mouthful. We'll see you in the next module. Thanks. Bye-bye.